Hello and welcome. Tonight I'm going to go through the process of canning wort. Now everybody's had a brew day where you're getting ready to brew and you realize that you haven't made a yeast starter. Or maybe you didn't have the yeast on hand, you had to run to the brew store the morning of your brew day and pick it up and you didn't have the time to make a yeast starter. Well, so you get your DME out, you make a 1-2 liter starter, and you pitch your yeast into it and get it going. Well, it's not quite that easy. You have to boil the DME on the stove. You gotta wait for that water wort now to cool down, and then you pitch your yeast. So you've wasted an hour of time uh, building a starter, time that you could be spending brewing. Well. Uh, a lot of people, myself included, uh, have begun canning wort to be used uh, for starters. Now, I shouldn't say a lot of people have begun. It's been something people have been doing for a lot of years. But uh, this is just my take on how to do it and what I do when I make canned wort. Now, there are two ways you can make wort to can. Uh, one way that I have used, and if you look in these uh, cans I got or jars I have right here. Um, I took some second runnings from a pretty strong batch uh, of a stout that I made and when I was done getting my boil kettle full to where I needed it to be and where the gravity of it was good I checked the runnings coming out of the mash tun and there's still a little bit of water coming out and a little wort coming out and it was at like 1.020. Not really high but not low but it's something I could work with so what I did is I pulled off a couple gallons of the second runnings out of the wort and I put it in a separate kettle and I boiled that uh, 1020 wort for about a half hour 45 minutes maybe an hour I don't know exactly how long it was and I turned that two gallons into a little more than a gallon and a quarter I think and by that time after boiling off all the moisture uh, it raised my specific gravity up to right around 1035, 1040, 1044. Um, looking at this, I don't have it labeled on there, oh here we go, yeah it was uh, 1040. So anyway, uh, once I raised the gravity up to that I saved the wort overnight and I proceeded the next morning to can it into these jars here. Now um, anytime I need a starter I can just grab one of these jars, toss it into my Erlenmeyer flask, uh, and pitch the yeast, and I'm good to go. I don't even have to screw around. Uh, anyway, it's a real time saver. So here's some of the equipment you need to get going. Um, you need a pressure canner. Uh, you cannot can wort without using high pressure. Uh, high pressure being 15 pounds pressure on your canner. Uh, that is because you have to raise the temperature of this liquid up to around 250 degrees to kill any organisms and toxins that are present in the ward. Uh, if you don't do it, you get botulism. I mean, seriously. It's not a good thing to uh, store something like this for a long period of time if it's not canned properly. Um, it's a it's a low acid food and you can't just use the water bath canning method that you might be familiar with making pickles or canning tomatoes uh, high acid foods like that those can be water bath canned uh, you just put them in boiling water for some period of time and they're good to go well with this stuff you gotta raise the temperature up to 250 degrees and you gotta leave it there for at least 20 minutes in fact, uh, you could leave it there for as much as 100 minutes. Um, when I do it, I, I do it for a half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, absolute minimum canning it uh, under pressure is 20 minutes. I don't do it for any less than that. Like I said, do it for 30, 40 minutes just to be safe. Um, what I got here over here in the middle, just some standard canning jars, ball jars, mason jars. Uh, pick them up at any store. Uh, any big box store, Walmart, Target, uh, Kroger, Baker's, Hy-Vee, whatever. Everybody sells these. Um, even uh, Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot. Uh, you also have to get canning lids. Uh, these are um, small mouth jar lids. 
they also have wide mouth jar lids where the mouth openings as wide as the jar and you need the rings to cinch them down uh, anyway we'll go through that when I go through the process uh, finally you need some DME if you don't have second runnings if you have second runnings you can just pour the second runnings right into the jar fill it up to about three quarter inches from the top which is right below the lip there and put your uh, wash seals on it just screw it down hand tight not over tight just snug tight um, put it in your canner uh, put enough water in the canner to where you're about two inches up in the jar and shut the lid heat it up set your pressure at 15 pounds once your pressure gauge starts jiggling about four times a minute um, and it'll probably jiggle a whole lot more and you can shut the temperature down a little bit on your stove uh, then you start your timer and let it go uh, anyway um, DME to get a 1040 wart uh, 1.040 specific gravity you need to use approximately a hundred grams of wort per thousand milliliters of water so it's like a 10 to 1 I mean, weight to volume ratio um, well actually 1 to 10 weight to volume ratio uh, I can in the quarts so a quart is approximately uh, 936 milliliters so uh, I need a little bit less uh, than that ratio. Now a lot of people just rule of thumb say uh, for every two cups of water you use a half a cup of DME so a cup per bot, per jar fill it up with water um, also works out to be about three and a half ounces if you weigh it um, if you're cooking you're making bread something like that you're weighing grain weighing hops you do it by weight same thing could be true with the DME um, but really it works out to be around a cup per quart um, actually I think you can go a little lighter than that uh, anywhere between three quarters of a cup and a cup is good uh, but what I'm gonna do when we get started here and you can follow along is I'll measure out the DME put it in the jars <coughs> fill the jars up with water snug the lids down shake it up a little bit to kind of uh, see where I stand volume wise add a little water if I need to um, you really don't need to shake it up you can just pour it in put the water down and you're probably good to go uh, the boiling and pressure in the kettle is definitely gonna make all of this DME dissolve uh, I've never had a problem you're never gonna have any lumps or anything like that uh, anyway we'll follow along with the process and uh, hopefully you learned something now one thing I did uh, mention, if you can see, you know, in the bottom of the pint there, it's real apparent. Uh, and since it's, it's dark, it might not be real easy to see it. But you can see that on the bottom of there, there is a little bit of trub. Uh, you'll have some of that, whether you're using uh, second runnings, can't really tell in this one. Uh, but you'll have that whether you're using second runnings or DME. You will get the same proteins uh, created. Uh, when this is boiling in the pressure cooker as you would in a boil kettle so there'll be definite you'll see some definite coagulation if you leave it it's going to settle to the bottom when you make your starter you just pour everything off and leave that behind uh, or you could just leave it in typically when I make a starter I cold crash and uh, let everything go down pour off the starter beer and then pitch it as is with what's left of the yeast um, anyway that's the ticket. So follow along. Thank you. Okay, it's day two. Uh, I'm going to finish up my canning process here. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting before I actually do the canning. Uh, reading through a lot of blogs and a lot of websites, uh, a lot of people say, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that if you put a half a cup per pint of water of DME to the water, that that'll give you a 1040 wart. Um, other people have said uh, 100 grams to a thousand milliliters. Um, I've also read three and a half ounces by weight uh, to a quart. So I'm going to do some experimentation before I do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to 
Uh, measure a half a cup to a pint with this. I'm going to measure three quarters of a cup to a quart for this. A cup to a quart for this. And then I'm going to weigh three and a half ounces to a quart. And I'm going to put them in a boiler. I'm not going to pressure cook them just yet until they dissolve. And then I'm going to get my refractometer out and I'm going to check the gravity on each of them and see where they actually stand and see what it really takes. Um, really, they say by weight is the best measure because you're getting the actual weight of the malt. Um, other people say uh, it's just as well and just as good to use it by measure. Um, personally, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. I relax and don't worry about it. But, you know, it's going to be close enough regardless. But I am kind of curious as to what the differences are going to be. So that's going to be my next step. You can follow along in the process. Okay, I'm ready to move forward with my experiment. Um, I got two quarts in a pint jar here. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to do three uh, vessels here. I'm going to do one quart with three quarters of a cup of DME. I'm going to do one quart with three and a half ounces of DME. And I'm going to do a pint with a half cup of DME. I figured that will extrapolate out to a quart with a cup. So we'll see how that comes out. Um, anyway. So first thing I'm going to do is, uh, well, I got it right here. Put the uh, half cup into my pint here. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm just going to put some, oh crap, some old lids on here. Um, I'll replace these with brand new fresh lids. You never reuse lids when you're canning. Um, this one's just going to be pea pint. Um, this one here, put a lid on it. Call it uh, three quarter cup. Okay. Yeah. And this one's going to be. 3.5 ounces. And in the past, I think I typically use the three and a half ounces and go ahead and weigh things out, but I'm not 100% sure of that. It's been a while since I've had the can from DME. But as you saw from earlier, all of the all the wort I have right now for starters is dark and I mean it works it's great um, and I usually do cold crash my starters so it doesn't really affect the color of my beer but that's a hassle this way I can just toss it into a lighter beer and not worry about it if I don't have time to cold crash okay I'm gonna add some water to these and uh, we'll move a little forward okay I've gone ahead and added uh, water to each of my jars here and if you look, I added it right up to where the bottom of the thread ring is. I did that in all three jars. Now, I'm going to go ahead and seal these up enough so I can shake them. Although, DME doesn't really dissolve when the water is not hot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, again, this is just temporary with these caps and lids. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I have a double boiler going over here. It's actually my pressure cooker with some water in it. And I'm just going to set the jars in there temporarily. And let that water heat up and that way the DME will uh, dissolve. I may add a little more water once it's dissolved depending on uh, where it ends up but uh, so that they're all equal in volume so I can test them accurately but we'll go ahead and let this go for a few minutes and come back. Okay, my uh, wort is still liquefying. Um, I'm going to do one more thing here. Um, I weighed out another three and a half 
ounces of uh, dry malt extract and just for the hell of it I'm gonna see how much that measures out to so I've got a measuring cup here and it has markings going up to a cup and up to uh, um, 250 milliliters which I guess doesn't do me any good because that's not a dry measure I mean, or a weight measure but I'm just gonna see carefully how much volume this really is because you know if I found out that three and a half ounces is three quarters of a cup it's good enough for me and actually it looks like it's less than that um, looks to me like it's about two-thirds of a cup okay here's where you are right now um, I just measured out a thousand grams or a hundred grams of this and it ended up being about three and a half ounces, 100 grams, um, weight-wise. Uh, it was about two-thirds of a cup. So remember that, two-thirds of a cup per liter. Um, I use about two-thirds of a cup, apparently, for a quart. Now, I'm going to take my uh, jars apart here. Uh, they've been in the hot water. And if you look, I'm going to hold it. It's a little warm still, so I'm going to have to be real careful but the DME is pretty much dissolved okay so now same thing with these I and mean, DME is dissolved it's actually even started doing some protein uh, coagulation in there which is kind of weird and last but not least the pint one same thing, the DME's dissolved in there. So, I'm gonna check my gravity. Um, this pint one probably has cooled down more than the other ones. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Now remember, this was half a cup for two cups of water. Um, I'm gonna take my spoon here. Okay, and my refractometer. Just take a, take a little bit out of here, stir it up a little. Okay. Take the drops on there. And wow, holy cow. That says 1.090. I don't know if I'll be able to. I've never tried this, but let's see if I can put this in here. No, no, that's not gonna work. That's a bit of ridiculous. Uh, 1.090, I really find that hard to believe. right there about 88 to 90 okay well, that was a half a cup of DME to two cups of water okay. this one here is three quarters of a cup of DME to four cups of water or a quart Now that gives me, reading it right at around 1070, 
Yeah, that says 1.065. It's a good thing. So that was three quarters of a cup. 1.065. Right here is three and a half ounces by weight. And remember that worked out to be about two thirds of a cup. Feel good. One point oh five oh. So I know my refractometer is pretty accurate. Um, I have compared it to a uh, hydrometer and it works pretty well. Um, I'm going to try this one one more time. Just for a second, Chad. Yeah, about 1.049. Um, so it looks like the three and a half ounces, or maybe a little less, gives you the right proportion, um, or two thirds of a cup. Uh, I think I'm going to try one more experiment uh, with. Let me see. Try to do this. Okay, I used half a cup in my pint jar here. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pour that into this quart jar here. And I'm going to add some water to raise it up to a quart and see where it comes out. Um, this is just an experiment, so um, I'm going to probably just dump all these together and get a wart of the right consistency or the right gravity before I can. But what I really wanted to show you at this part in addition to experimenting to see how much you really need to use is the fact that you can put the uh, DME right in the jar, uh, add the water to it, put it on the stove or put it in your pressure cooker and it will dissolve as part of the pressure cooking process. But Okay, I'm going to add some water to this. Make sure it's not too hot. It's not going to bust the glass. All right, there's half a cup of DME and a quart of water. Yeah, let's do that real good. one point oh four three that's amazing um, just for the sake of uh, demonstration I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna put it in a hydrometer and let it come down to room temperature and see what happens so I'm gonna stop the video right now we'll come back I took some of the wort out of the jar that I threw the pint of wort and DME into and added another pint of water to and that was one quart of water to a half a cup of DME. I measured it with my refractometer and uh, it measured out right at exactly 1040. So just to be uh, super sure and super accurate, I went ahead and put some in this hydrometer here, cooled it down, I had a temperature sensor in it, and it's at exactly 1042. And I'm gonna see if I can get this just right here and bring the camera over and show you and hopefully I can get this thing focused in and get it close enough to where you can read yet yeah, still stay in focus all right there you go right there 1040 right next to the water well as you saw the Wharton hydrometer was 1040 um, and uh, that pretty much proves that uh, you need a half a cup of DME per quart of water. Now what I did, um, I mixed everything together into this pot here and uh, heated it up a little bit and stirred it. I've been checking the gravity of it 
and I've got it right now to where it's at 1040. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pour it into the quart jars. Now, um, this is going to kind of simulate what you would do if you had some second runnings that you boiled down to 1040 and wanted to can. Uh, that's exactly what this would be if it wasn't DME. Um, but again, half a cup of DME, fill up the quart jar to just under the brim, and you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll get started with the pressure canning. Well, I've got everything ready to go now. Um, I've got four jars of 1040 wort. As I uh, showed you earlier, I mixed it all together. Um, I ended up diluting it down because I had way too much DME in some of these jars based on the measurements that I did. And uh, ended up again with the formula of a half a cup to a quart. So pour a half a cup in, fill the water up to the line on the uh, collar there, and uh, you're good to go. In my case, I had to boil it together and dilute it down, but that's all right. That's part of the experimentation process. So now what I'm going to do is get ready to uh, can it. So I'm going to put the lids on here, freshly washed lids, um, tighten up the rings, just get them snug. You don't want to over tighten them. Um, they will come off as soon as you're done here. Okay. With that there, now I'm ready to put it in the canner. Okay, it's been about uh, 10 minutes and the pressure cooker, uh, pressure release weight has started to jiggle. Now what that means is that it's up to pressure. Now, you don't want this jiggling all the time, it's just letting a lot of steam out unnecessarily. What you only want is for it to jiggle maybe four times a minute or less. So I'm gonna turn the heat down and what will happen is as the heat goes down, it will start jiggling a lot less. I'm going to give that about 30 seconds and until it actually stops for a second. Then I'm going to start the timer. Now as I mentioned before, since this is a low acid uh, wort, you have to pressure cook it. And it needs to be at 250 pound, 50 degrees, which is what 15 pounds of pressure gets you. Um, I'm going to leave it on the stove here for 45 minutes. So, okay, there's stop for a minute, slow it down. Sometimes it takes a little bit of uh, time to get it to where it's not jiggling so much, but it's at 15 pounds pressure and we're in pretty good shape here. So, I'm gonna start the timer for 45 minutes and we'll come back to it. Timer went off, it's been going for 45 minutes. So now, the next step you do is just leave it alone. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off the heat here and let this naturally cool down. You don't wanna pop the weight, you don't wanna open it, you wanna let it naturally cool, cool down. If you did something like that, there could be some thermal shock that happens inside the pressure cooker and your jars could burst. So just leave it alone. It's going to take an hour or two for it to cool down and uh, let it get to the point where the pressure is going to be let off automatically by itself and you can open it up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to leave it. Well, it's been about two hours, two and a half hours maybe. And uh, this has been sitting here, cooled off considerably. Uh, can pull the weight off. Nothing, no pressure coming out. Open up the lid, and it opens right up. Now, get my jar lifter, because they still are warm. 
and here's what we got. There's some canned wort. They said there is some definite protein coagulation in there, but it's nice and clear. Gonna let that sit for however long it's gonna sit until I need some wort. But there's a quart of starter wort ready to go. Now what I'll do is let this cool overnight and uh, the jar lids, um, I don't know if you've ever canned before, but the lids will pop back in as it cools down and let you know that you got a good seal. And that's it. Um, once it cools off, uh, write that uh, I canned it today and that it's 1040 wort and uh, that's all she wrote. Now I uh, have some time tonight. It's still fairly early. It's only about 8 o'clock. So I think I'm going to can some pints now. Um, now with pints, since I know I needed a half a cup for a quart, I'll just use a quarter cup of DME for the pints. But uh, I'll uh, go through that process really quick as I'm working on it. So follow along. Again, now I'm going to can some pints. Got everything ready to go here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use a quarter cup of DME per pint. And I'll just make this go really fast because now that I know exactly how much to use, um, it shouldn't be a big deal. So, okay, quarter cup. One done. Here we go. Two. Three. Now I don't know how much DME I'm going to have here. So I have uh, room in my pressure cooker for up to six pints. I, I tested them before I uh, started here to make sure I had six ready to go. That's four. Excuse me. And looks like I'm going to have enough DME. So, again, this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but it helps to know exactly the proportions you need. So, this is just standard uh, Brees. Golden Light Dry Mold Extract, and uh, that's it. Pull this back up. Oops. <laughs> Guess I uh, don't want to put my measuring cup in there. Now I'll pull this back up. Looks like I need to pick up some DME next time I'm at the brew store which is probably going to be tomorrow because we got John Palmer in town and he's going to be visiting my local home brew store tomorrow. All right now come over here and put the sink over here and move off to the side a little bit so you can see as before just going to fill up the, let me see what I'm doing here, okay, as before, I'm going to fill this up, and I'm going to go a little slower so it doesn't foam up, okay, again, right to the rim, that's all you have to do, that's it. Now there's probably some air in the extract, so I will go ahead and shake it a little bit.
once I put the lids on. This is how it should be. I wasted a lot of time trying to calculate and figure everything out. Now I know this could not be much faster. Okay. Come back over to the uh, table over here. <clears throat> I got my rings and lids right here, or rings and, uh, it looks like they still have little suds on it from washing. I got rings and seals here. Snug shake. Snug shake. Snug shake. Now, like I said, there's some DME still left in there. By the time this is done with the 45 minutes of pressure, there's not going to be any DME left in the bottom there. It's going to all melt and all be in this thing. Okay. Show you what we got. There you go. Six jars. Ready to go in my cooker. Now I'm going to bring it over to the sink, fill it with some water. Okay. If you look, we see the water's up about, I know inch to two inches up the side of the jars now it's just repeating the canning the pressure cooker process put it in here oops oops wrong way Make sure. Gotta get it on the right direction here. Okay, there we go. Then on. Put my weight at 15. Put it over here. Crank up the heat. It's ready to go. In about, uh, oh, 10 minutes. I'll check on it. And it should be bubbling. Well, that's it. That's all you got to do. It didn't take me five minutes to make six pints of uh, starter wort. It's going to take 45 minutes to an hour total in the pressure cooker. Turn the heat off, let it cool overnight, and I'll have uh, six pints, three quarts of uh, uh, starter wort ready to use anytime I want. I just have to take it, open up the jar, pour it in my flask. Uh, add some yeast, put it on the stir plate, I'm ready to make a starter in five minutes. Uh, could have taken me more than, I don't know, five minutes to do what I just did. So that's all it takes. It's one of the easiest things in the world to do if you got a pressure cooker. Pressure cookers aren't that expensive. You can probably pick one up at your local Goodwill or thrift store. Um, have at it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Everything's been sitting overnight and ready to open up the pressure cooker.
Got six pints of wort here. Look at that. Nice clear. See the protein on the bottom? No. DME left down there. Strictly just protein. The tops popped in. They have it. One pint canned wort. So, six pints here. Ready to go. Move the rings. Label them. I'm good. So now I've got six quarts of starter wort. I can use anytime I want. Uh, it's going to save me a lot of time come brew day. One other quick thing I like to do after I take all the rings off is I just like to wipe the jar down a little bit. Uh, as you're cooking it, sometimes uh, some of the wort leaks out through the seals before it has a chance to pressurize and seal itself up. So it can get kind of sticky in the outside. Doesn't hurt to wipe them down. There you have it, seven quarts. Four quarts, six pints. A lot of work. Um, now, as again, following up on what I said a couple minutes ago, half a cup of DME to a quart of water, a quarter cup of DME to a pint of water. Uh, now, remember, I was using light DME. Um, I don't know if it would make a difference if you used a different kind of uh, dry malt extract. Um, it may or may not. I really don't know. Um, you could probably plug that into Beersmith or one of the beer programs and it would tell you how much uh, sugars that would add to a recipe and tell you if you got a little bit more. But um, again, straightforward, easy to do. If all you're going to do is do the straight canning, it's really quick. I showed that in the pints. Uh, doesn't take a whole lot of effort. Make sure you have clean jars, clean lids and seals. Um, new seals, don't reuse seals, uh, but um, that's what it takes.